Okay. Quick, 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 quick recap from yesterday. Unfortunately, stuff doesn't hold its value. Some decreases faster in value, and we and we we see it two ways. As things depreciate, we have what's called the depreciation expense, always the debit because expenses are debited, and that's an income statement activity. The credit side will always be accumulated depreciation, which is a balance sheet side of things. Okay. Think of it as the years go by, a pile over here starts to form. So as one year go by, goes by, it dumps in the pile. Another year goes by, it dumps in the pile. Oftentimes, depreciation expense is, especially with straight line, it's the same every year. So the pile grows the same rate every year, but just remember that this is like chipping off a piece of the car and it goes and th throws into the accumulated depreciation pile, okay? We see three methods used. Straight line, where you will see Every year, the depreciation expense is the same. Every year, the accumulated depreciation pile grows at the same rate. Okay, we see units of activity. So we don't really care about straight line there. We just say, well, how much do we use it? Things like seasonal stuff, school buses, lawnmowers, different things like that. For both of these, we are taking into account the depreciable cost. So in other words, the purchase price minus the salvage value equals depreciable cost. And that's our base. The third one is what's called double declining. And I think this represents the vehicle industry the most. Falls really fast the first few years of ownership and then kind of plateaus off. Think about cars. You, know, you get a car that's maybe five years old, six years old, they're all kind of the same price for a couple years versus brand new really falls off in a double declining rate. Well, what you need to know is this doesn't, it's not concerned with depreciable cost. You only look at the purchase price. Sorry, my stuff's kind of screwed up over there. When I was doing our homework that we're going to do today, I found a better way to calculate straight line rate to then, of course, get to our double declining rate. And this is what we're going to use. We're going to take 100% divided by its useful years to get a percentage. And it's, so, it's, it's cleaner. As soon as I went, and went back in my notes, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is so much easier. So if we're going to have something for five years, our single rate would be, it's going to decrease 20% every year. For double declining, we'd of course double that to 40. That looks terrible, but 40%. Okay, so let's talk quickly about what happens when you get close to the salvage value. So this is double declining. I think our double declining rate was 40, if I remember right. Let me use my clicker here, excuse me. So remember the floral delivery truck from yesterday? We bought it for 13 grand. On the other two depreciation methods, we needed to take into consideration salvage value, and we, this was the depreciable cost. For here, this is what, what we purchased. It's decreasing at a rate of 40%. The accumulated depreciation pile, it's basically taking this plus the pile, which was nothing, with the ending book value of 78. So you basically take 13 minus 52 to equal 78. Now that is what we begin our next year with at 40%. So now the pile has grown a little bit. That is what we get our next year with. So we keep going year by year by year. Now remember, it's a five-year 
useful life, but it can't dip below its salvage value. What's our salvage value? Thousand bucks. So this has to be 1,000 there. So then we're going to force our math. Okay, we're going to force our math because this cannot dip below $1,000. So it, we're only going to depreciate it by that forced math in that last year. So as you get to its useful years and it's getting close to its salvage value, you force your math. We talked about it yesterday, but I'm like, it was hurrying, it was rushed, the bell was ringing, and I wanted you to just truly understand that. Okay. It works for all of the depreciation methods. It's just that they do, they make it so the math works out for us, where we don't have to force math. The other ones, it's just that this one, they presented it that way. Are you ready to try this? I'm excited to try it. Instead of doing this on the workbook pages provided, because I honestly, I don't, I don't like them. It's the same concepts, it's just that they do it in a different way. Kind of like my FIFO LIFO average, I kind of do it a little bit different. <clears throat> Let's focus on 10, exercise 10 six on page 504. Please go there. Anytime I'm doing depreciation, I put all the players in before I actually do the depreciation methods. And I want you to think of this similar to FIFO LIFO average. How at the top you have all your information. Now here's the FIFO way, here's the LIFO way, here's the average way. Same thing here. Here's the straight line way, here's the units way, and here's the Here's the um, double declining way, okay? So I'm gonna write really big. Um, you can try, you can fit this on a page pretty easy, okay? What I'm writing right here, don't dip past about a fourth of the top of your page though, okay? So what are we buying? What are we buying here? What are we buying in 10.6? We're buying a, she a machine. I was right though, if we had to journalize the purchase of this equipment, it would be an equipment debit. Okay, so we are buying a machine and what was the purchase price of the machine? On what date? Arr, they bought it during the middle of the year. Game changer, isn't it? But that's okay. We can roll with it. So on October 1st, we had a purchase price of $150,000. What's our estimated salvage value? Is it 1,000? 12,000, okay. So what, if we had to span out over the five years, what would we force it to be down in that corner? 12, and we'd depreciate it by math to get it there, okay? How many working hours is this machine gonna have? If it was a bus or a vehicle, it'd be miles. How many working hours is this machine gonna have? 10,000 hours. Okay, what else do we need to know? How long is this thing gonna last? Is it five years? Okay. I like to stop and say, what's our depreciable cost going to be? And then I like to mark, oh yeah, here's where I'm going to use it. So our depreciable, I'm going to start um, abbreviating that. Our depreciable cost, and I know it's very obvious, but we take the 150 minus the $12,000 salvage value. And of course, our depreciable cost will be $138,000. Are we going to use that dollar amount for all the depreciation methods? No. This is for straight line and units. 
the 150 is for double, I almost put two Ds, but I think of something else when I <laughs> double Ds. So um, we'll just put double there, okay? So I feel like that's our plan. That's our roadmap. Instead of looking at the book, we're going to look at this, okay? So are you ready to try straight line? The book only has us do one year. The lecture had us do five years. Eventually, we'll have to do that much. The book starts us slow. Okay, so can I get rid of all this? It's in your notes, you're good. Okay. So, here we go with straight line. Before we even begin with straight line, I want to just talk rate for a minute. Our straight line rate, remember, it showed it a little bit different in the lecture. I remembered that I like taking 100% divided by how much was our useful life? Five. So our straight line rate is 20%. And if it would help to write five years there, great. Okay. So 2014. Our depreciable cost was what? We bought the thing for 150, salvage value was 12. Our depreciable cost was 138,000. Times 20% because that's what we figured out it's going to, it's our straight line rate. I want to make sure I'm doing that right. Let me get my calculator a minute. So at that point, it would depreciate 27,600 in a year. 27,600 in a year. Tell me, have we owned it for a year? No. We're going to take that times October, November, December. So three of 12 months, how much is it going to depreciate in 2014? 6,900 dollars. If we had to do 2015, which the book is not asking us to, we would take that same 138,000 times the straight line rate to equal 27,600. 27,600 will be the straight line annual depreciation. It's just that we bought the stinking thing on October 1st. So we have to accommodate that. If, let's think about this a minute. If we had to fill this whole thing out, remember it's a five year useful life, did we use it a full year in 2014? No. 2015 would be a full year. 2016 would be a full year. 2017 would be a full year. 2018 would be a full year. You might say 14 to 18, that's five years. No. Here's four full. Remember this component. So we'd actually bring it out to 2019 and use it nine of 12 months. So although that looks like on paper more than five years, there's four full and two partials that equal five. Okay. The book didn't even want us doing this much. I just thought it was good to talk about it. Now let's journalize this. What would it look like at the end of the year to journalize our depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation? Okay. It would look like on December 31st, a depreciation expense of $6,900 and our accumulated depreciation pile has grown also to $6,900. 
I think it would be good to put like partial year behind here, three of 12 months to know that was a rare one. Normally it's going to be 27,600. If I had to keep track of my pile, what does the accumulated depreciation pile look like at the end of, we've done 2014 and 2015? What would the pile look like? 6,900 in the first year, 27,600 in the second year, it would be, our pile would be 34,000. What can we not let the depreciation expense dip below? You guys remember the number? 12. So we're going to keep going, but we can't let it dip below 12,000. What do you think? Kind of easy? Okay, well, let's move on to units. Another type of depreciation method is units of activity. So in other words, we're only going to depreciate how much we use it. I keep mentioning the school bus example simply because we can visualize those school buses so easily. Running hard for nine months, sitting in the bus garage for three. Let's go back to straight line a minute. Can you think of an asset that just depreciates about the same every year? What about technology? Yeah? Can you think of others? Buildings, maybe? Okay. Roads. My husband will like that one. Yes, he's a road guy. All right, are we looking at depreciable cost or price, purchase price on this one? Bought the thing for 150, salvage value of 12. Is this one that we look at purchase price or dep depreciable cost? Depreciable cost. So get 138,000 in there, okay? If you wanna mark that a little bit so you remember that. How many hours are we expecting to use this machine? What's it going to cost per hour? Oof. $13.80 per hour. Holy cow, that thing's expensive. So let's use that and say what happened in 2014. Back in the book it said, units of activity, assuming the machine was used 1,700 hours. So in 2014, we actually used the thing 1,700 hours times the 13.8 per hour in that year. We saw 23,000, I got to look at my notes, 460. Oh, man. This side of my smart board is mad. 23,460. Sorry about that over there. So $150,000 thing minus its depreciable cost in one year based on the 1,700 hours we used it, it's going to decrease in value by 23,460. We are going to take that chunk as the depreciation expense, an expense of doing business. And we're also going to throw that same amount in the accumulated depreciation pile that's going to start growing. Oh my gosh, I got ahead of myself. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, we actually don't. Let's think about that. I'm glad you mentioned it. Sydney said, do we have to multiply it? Does it matter? Think about it a minute. 
in October, November, December, we used it 1,700 hours. So on that one, I'm so glad you mentioned that, the October 1st date doesn't matter. What matters is we used it 1,700 hours. So that does matter. Good question, and I'm glad you brought that up. Last one. You guys are doing an awesome job with this. I hope I'm making it easy. Does it feel easy? Good. The last type of depreciation that we're going to study is double declining. Purchase price or depreciable cost? I should use purchase cost, cost or depreciable cost. Which one are we factoring here? The $150,000 machine. What's our rate? Ira's right. Why is it 40%, Ira? It's double the straight line, and I want you to write that in. Double straight line. Remember, we got that by taking 100 divided by the years. So we doubled it here. In 2014, let's take our $150,000 machine. Remember, we don't factor in depreciable cost here. Times 40% equals... 60 grand. Woo! It's almost half because it is. It's a 40% decrease. Back to Sydney's question Do you think we factor in the times 3 twelfths at this point? Yes. So this would be if it was a full year, but we're going to take it times 3 twelfths because we didn't own it a full year. It's actually only going to depreciate in year one. I think it's 15,000, but let me double check. Yep. So in year one, it's gonna depreciate by 15,000 only. Leave some room, but then come down and journalize. Depreciation expense, accumulated depreciation. Remember, it's the partial year again, 3 twelfths. Um, depreciating by 15 grand. Take that 15 grand and literally throw it over in the accumulated depreciation pile that is going to start to grow, but can't grow to the fact where it gets to be 12 grand because then we got to force our math. I think they actually said due 2015 as well. So, what are we looking at for 2015? Well, oh, we take 150 minus 15,000. Ends up being, oh man. hundred and thirty five thousand in twenty fifteen. And you can do that a couple ways. Like if I wouldn't have run out of room over here, I could have said one fifty minus fifteen. I could have put that here and I could have drawn an uh, I could have drawn an arrow like that. Or you can do something like, I've had students like this format better, where they take the 150 minus what it was in 2014, and they start like this. Maybe that's a better layout. Do you like that better? Okay. So then, it's lost 40% of its value, but only over the three months. Now we're going to see a huge dip because it's a full year. It's going to go down by 54,000. 
So if we were doing another journal entry the next year, we'd simply just say, that's what it would look like if we were doing year two. It's a full year, so we can say minus 54,000. The book doesn't ask for 2016, let's just put it in anyway. I didn't do this one, so I gotta run my numbers here quick. 82,000, you guys maybe can do this in your head, I can't. Woof, by year three that thing, that $150, $50,000 thing is $32,000. But do you see how it's going to start to plateau? 54, 32, I mean, it's a slowly downward plateau, but it's not seeing that gouge like it is in the early years. I'm going to stop and ask, what's our accumulated depreciation pile up to so far? If you had to tell me right now what's our accumulated depreciation after your 2016, 54,000 plus 62 or 50 or 32,800 plus 15, 101,800. Thing is lost value by 101,800. Okay, so you see how each year we throw, throw. We did a journal entry, yes? I just erased it. Okay. You guys, that's it. I hope I made it feel easy. Because it's not. I hope, I'm not saying the authors of the book have a better method. I just like, I like my clean cut version. It's maybe a little more like tedious work. It's writing numbers and putting things down, but I think it, it tells the depreciation story a little bit better. I'm just going to peek at what the answer key said. Yeah, I like mine better. So my question is, would you like to try the second one on your own? Perhaps I could get you started, and then let's try the second one on your own. So go find a new piece of paper. This is exercise 10-7. Let's put the players in first. What are we buying in 10-7? We are purchasing, purchase cost, a delivery truck for 34000 Does that sound right? Yep. Yay, when did we buy it? Yay, January 1. We don't have to worry about partial years. Woohoo, good purchase on New Year's Day. Okay. What is our salvage value? What do we hope to have left after our eight years? Two grand. Estimated miles that we're going to be driving it. Remember last time it was hours of use on the machine. How many miles are we driving, hoping to drive this truck? 100,000 miles. We hope to have it for eight years, or the useful life is eight years. It doesn't ask us to run this, but let's do our depreciable cost which is, of course, 34000 minus the salvage value. <clears throat> We're going to look at kind of, think of it like a net cost or the depreciable cost. And I always like to see, okay, that's going to be used for straight line. That's going to be used for units. Heck, let's call this double D. We can all chuckle about it. Okay. It's basically asking you to do two years for each. 
So if I had to get this set up for straight line, and I'm going to let you work through the rest of them yourself, but if I had to get this set up for straight line, the first thing I would do is straight line, okay? I'm going to take 100% divided by 8. The thing is going to depreciate by 12.5% each year. When you do double, it would, of course, be 25%. I just, again, want to show you the format. So then in 2014, our depreciable cost at 32000 times 12.5%, it's going to go down in value by $4,000. <throat> if you want to start your accumulated depreciation pile, you know, you could put 4000 in there. But it's straight line. So in 2015, it's going to be that same 32,000 times, oh, I did that wrong, 12.5. Another 4,000 every year, it's going to depreciate by $4,000. But by year two or 2015, our accumulated depreciation pile has grown to eight grand. And that's all they want you to do. I don't even think they want you to journalize it. Yeah, they want you to do just straight line, yeah, part B. So go through units next, then do double. Part B, if you read it really close, they want you to prepare the journal entry for this one. So if you're like, heck, I'm going to do that now quick because I'm right here, that's fine. This is where they want the journal entry. So this is part B, actually number one. And then they want you to try to tell tell the reader, what is this going to look like on the balance sheet? Do you think you can do it in 10 minutes so I can show you the answers? Okay. I've got The units of activity, again, that 32000 is the depreciable cost my, divided by the estimated 100,000 miles will drive it. So you're looking at $0.32 cents a mile. In 2014, it was 15,000 mi 15, miles. In 2015, it was 12,000 miles. Um, these numbers, and I'll circle them in a different color here, these would be the depreciation expense for the year that we throw over in the pile. I like making the pile just so you visualize the pile. I know it's kind of silly, like we're drawing piles. But then had we had to stop and say, after 2015, what was our de accumulated depreciation up to? You can see it happening, OK? But it would have been, it would have been depreciation expense, accumulated depreciation. Now, in 2015, it's always it's always the two, the debit and the credit. We don't worry about that the value of that accumulated depreciation pile is up to 86.40. In a later lesson, when we sell assets, it's going to matter. But for now, no, it doesn't matter. Double, remember, we're going back to the purchase cost, not the depreciable cost. Okay. We're multiplying it times 25% because it's, of course, double the single line rate. So there you have it. Yes. Awesome question. It's in the book. So on page 504, they're always going to have to tell you, like, where it says exercise 107, Linton Company, the last sentence there, actual miles driven were 15,000 in 2014, 12,000 in 2015. Yep. I always kind of go, where do the numbers say it again? But it's in the little book bio. Yep. I didn't write this one out because I was busy writing this. But in part B, it asks you two things. In part B, it asks you to journalize the 2014 straight line rate. So you just go back up and look. Depreciation expense. It was a full year, so I don't have to write partial year. Uh, and then the accumulated depreciation pile, it was four grand. 
would the 2015,000 transaction look exactly alike? Why? Because it's straight line. It's the same every year. Okay. In number two, they're saying, tell me what this looks like on the balance sheet. And I really like that they did this. On the balance sheet, we would list this probably as equipment. And we bought the thing for $34,000 minus the accumulated depreciation on the equipment. What did it go down that year? Four grand using straight line. So we'd actually show equipment at $30,000 in 2014. Because remember, accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account. We don't look at it that way. We show it that way in the balance sheet, but we look at it more as a, this is an expense of doing business by owning these assets. We need this delivery truck if we're a floral shop. We need it. Oftentimes they're ripping around in vans, but whatever. Okay. We need it, and it's just part of doing business. You guys were rock stars. This, was, this went well. I'm not sweating, and we have five minutes. So that's good. We have one more section to cover in, no. Yes, we do, we do. 